average and a 917 save percentage. Franklin Pierce going from left to right here to start this hockey game across your live stream. We're ready to play some hockey here. And we're underway as the puck is chopped through center. Doucette will move it back to Bridget Prentice. Who will move it back up to Doucette. Stays on her feet after taking some contact. Now Nicole Amato tries to move on to this puck. Olivia Bryan under some duress. Turns it over. Ravens now trying to activate. It's Bridget Prentice in behind the net. Prentice leaves a backhand in behind a no one. Amato now trying to forecheck. Pioneers will look to break it out. Cross zone pass connects. Here comes Lewis. Might have a step on Doucette. Doucette did just enough to infract her from behind. And then Lewis lost the puck. And Prentice plays it up the boards. Puck kind of got behind everybody. Katie Newberger tried to one-hand it out of the zone. Couldn't. Chipping it further in is Haley Payne. Payne now trying to center out in front. Missed everyone. Back to the point it comes. Nicole Goody with a shot. That's off a of body and wide. Trying to pick it up for the Ravens is Allie Sugar. She can't backhand it out. Puck is sent around the Ravens net. Prentice picks it up. Up the board she goes. Doucette, long shift for her. Puck is finally forced out. Doucette right in front of her own bench. Mucking for it. Play comes offside. And so we've got our first stoppage here with the faceoff coming right in front of the Ravens bench. And right there, Jane Lewis coming down the right wing side. That is the last player you want to see barreling down on the goal, Ezra, if you're the Ravens. And, and a, a slow start for the Ravens. You see a couple miscommunications on missed passes and, and missed plays, but I, I don't know. Just got to get your legs under you. Absolutely, as Haley Donahue comes in and around to pick up this puck through the legs of Parker, then on to Ostrander. She has to make a save. Puck loose in the slot, and it's taken away by Marissa Massaro, who now moves it up to Haley Parker. Parker cutting in, makes a nice move. She's in, and she puts the shot there. Wide to the blocker side of Urban, Haley Parker getting engaged early on. 40 points on the season for the sophomore. That's a new program record as Massaro in her own end. Backhands one across the zone. Delaney Guimont on it for the Ravens. Up she goes to Massaro. Good stick coming, though, from Lexi Edwards of the Pioneers. And Edwards gets tangled up with Ann Margaret DeSisio, who makes her return to the lineup after a string of absences. Haley Donahue flips this puck out to neutralize. Lewis picks it up and banks it off the boards. Donahue banks it right back ahead to freshman Steph Proto, who scored her first career collegiate goal in this building. Drops it off for DeSisio. Shot through the blue paint. Never got to Urban. Kelsey Holmes mucking for it. Proto comes in there. Good puck support. Proto along the near side wall. Sends it in below the goal line. But back to get it for the Pioneers is Olivia Bryant, the NEWHA Defensive Player of the Year. Snaps a lead pass up ahead. Gathered up there by Lewis. Lewis right to the slot. Chance there, and it's just put wide. Great setup there. Katie Stuvey just put it wide to the glove. Puck then comes off of Carolyn Drown, dangerously in front of Ostrander. This is that line as Klein moves it back to the point. Shot is flubbed wide off the stick of Jordan San Islo, and the Ravens survive, but that was surely dangerous as the Pioneers look for Quick re-entry, and they get it. Two on one here. Pass across. Chance. The shot. The score. <laughs> Top shelf they go. And the Pioneers pressing. Get the game's first goal here. Short side high. And Victoria Grimmer. Let that one rip. And, and, and right there for the Ravens, you have your, your close defenseman. She pinches. And so it's only Bridget Prentice back, I believe. Bridget Prentice, Kate Newber, whoever it was. I believe it was Prentice. But then it's a two on oh. You, you have Kiki Doucette, who is a defenseman. She's playing forward. She started the season as a defenseman. She, she needs to know, all right, I got to get back, prevent that 2 on 0 But no one gets back. 2 on 0 for Sager Hart, one nothing. And pass called here. So 3:09 into the game. The Pioneers strike first. And they lead it one nothing. Victoria Grimmer, her eighth goal of the season. And that's about as perfectly executed of a 2 on 1 as you'll see right there. As a great pass across from Maddie Bishop, number 20, and then short side high for Grimmer, who is in tight at the bottom of the right circle. As the Ravens now will look to counter, here comes Nicole Amato, thought about dropping it off, now we'll take it in behind the net. Amato protecting as she's draped along there by a pioneer defender. Meg Gilbride now in the corner trying to free it. Amato coming in there to help her out. 
Puck is pinned along in the corner. No movement just yet. Finally worked free by the Ravens as Amato makes a nice curl and drag route, forcing her way to the front, and she just pushed it wide. Urban looked to get a piece of it off the blocker. Guimont offers shin pads, holds the line. A couple tired Ravens as they'll look to change up. And the Pioneers will settle things down, but there's that offensive magic of Nicole Amato right in front. Single-handedly worked her way to the top of the crease and forced Urban into a stop in tight. As the puck log jam here in front of the Pioneers bench popped up in the air. And we've got a hand pass here yet again. 15-36, early stages of the first period, but the Pioneers off and running here on a really good start for them. Can't say the same, though, for Franklin Pierce. A bit sluggish here through about the opening four and a half minutes of this one. Uh, and you know me, I, I'm a big believer that you gotta, you have that that drive. You gotta do whatever you can to, to get yourself warm. I mean, men's lacrosse had a game earlier in 30 degree weather. And, I mean, it's hard to get warm there. It's just as hard to get warm when you have that bus ride. So gotta do it, whatever you do, whatever gets you in that mindset to play this game, you have to do it. Pioneers moving back into Franklin Pierce territory again. Good stick coming there from Marissa Massaro defensively. Two Pioneers collided. Ravens trying to take advantage as Massaro sends a long dump in, in onto Urban, who stops off the stick. We have played five minutes into this first period. The Pioneers have struck first for a goal, looking for more as they're right back in over the line. Good defensive cancellation from Katie Newberger. She gets it out to neutral ice, but it's sent right back in by the Pioneers. Number 12, Juliana Lynch. And there's, there's too much hesitation coming right now from the Ravens. You hear a lot, you, you, you can't hesitate. You have to make a decision and stick with that decision. And there's too much, oh, am I going to do it? Am I not going to do it? Whatever comes to mind first, you just got to do it. Live with the consequences, but you just got to do it. Bridget Prentice having a hard time here. Puck comes up the wall for Emily Kramer. She tries to reverse it. It goes off a of body. Prentice back of her own net trying to make a play. Up the near side, she finds the Sissio who finds Holmes, who passes it ahead to Emily Kramer. Good cancellation there. Ravens take it back, and we've got a stoppage here. And uh, too, many, too, too many, players. many players on the ice. Coach Stockdale not happy with that, but the referees catch the Ravens in a sloppy change, and the Pioneers are going to go on a power play here. And a less than ideal start not a for Franklin Pierce. Not a call you see very often in playoff hockey. No. Because there's always a debate. Do I call it? Do I not call it? It's playoff hockey. Every penalty can, can change what happens in a game. So, I mean, you just not, right. not something you see very often. Franklin Pierce, the most penalized team in the NEWHA. They average about 10 minutes a game. But they have the best penalty kill in the NEWHA. So go figure. They'll have to get one here. Trailing already by one. As Steph Proto will serve the too many players on the ice call. Ravens so far in good shape as Delaney Guimont just drives this one, but it goes off of Bryant. Now Massaro trying to push it ahead to Parker, perhaps a shorthanded rush, but it's canceled out there by Katie Stuvey, who comes right back in. Stuvey has a step on Donahue as she swoops in and around the net. Now finds Lewis back up top to the point for Bryant, and they'll go to work. Lewis across to San Islo, who shoots right on, and Ostrander got a pat on that. Puck popped up off the glass. Guimont hits the deck. Stuvey has it shot. Walker saved by Ostrander. Rebound possessed there by Lewis. Lewis drops it off to San Islo, who banks it down below the goal line for Klein. Klein had three points last time these two teams met up in Wingenton. Across it goes. Shot off a of body. It's loose in front of Ostrander. She can't tie it up. Pioneers have it as Stuvey slides a pass that comes back to San Islo. 55 seconds left to go as San Islo has the puck. Wants the shot, fakes and gives it across to Bryant. Back into the slot, good cancellation by Massaro, who was out of gas. She gets a big clear, and the Ravens will get fresh personnel out. And you, you mentioned the Ravens' best penalty kill in the NAWHA, and you see there, the puck's not getting to the middle of the zone. All the shots are coming from the outside, and that's crucial because you've got an unbelievably good goaltender in Emmy Ostrander. She's going to save those shots from the outside. So what the players are doing is they're, they're executing it perfectly by keeping the Sacred Heart attackers on the outside. Good keep at the line by Nicole Goody. 20 seconds left to go in the power play as it's worked back to the point. Solik creeping. Down low she goes. Grimmer shot blocked down off of, or rather that was Payne with the shot blocked down off of Katie Newberger. And the Ravens get a big clear from Bridget Prentice all the way down to Sarah Urban. Five seconds left 
in the penalty. Proto getting set to exit the box. And the Ravens get a big kill here in the early stages of this first period as Proto is out. Meg Gilbride in neutralize, gloves it down. Pioneers coming though right back in instantly. Maddie Bishop draped over there by Katie Newberger. Bishop now trying to stop and start. Both players go down. Bishop remains with the puck. Pioneers have it now in behind the net. Wraparound chance right out in front. Bishop turning and she couldn't shoot it. It's loose right in front of Ostrander and punched behind the cage. There have been some hairy moments in front of the Ravens crease as they look to get it out but cannot. More pressure as that high rising shot catches the glass. Bodies hitting the deck as Amato got tangled up with Bishop. And Newberger gets tangled up with the official. And right there in front of the net, Nicole Amato, she made, she did the, the perfect play there. The puck was loose in front and the Sacred Heart player was closing in on it. All she did was she tapped it behind the net. Just get it anywhere except in front of Emmy Ostrander. Lead passes on to Edwards. Puck skips wide of Ostrander. Donahue there to pick it up. Turns it over though. Edwards in front, chance there, and a high rising shot blocked out play. Another dangerous look. And letting that shot go was Kelly Solik, the defenseman pinching in. There have been a lot of pucks in and around Ostrander's net, virtually right at her doorstep. And the Pioneers have unable to cash in. They just have the one goal off the two on one rush, which was a quality look. The Ravens, however, haven't done much in Sarah Urban's neck of the woods. So far, as we tick towards the halfway point of this period, 10.47 left to go here in Manchester. 1-0 our score as Ali Sugar four checks. Marissa Massaro made some contact, avoids a penalty. And the puck is sent in. Solik is back to pick it up. Makes a nice move in behind her own net. Lead passes on, and the Pioneers escape once again as Juliana Lynch will dump it and now change it as Edwards pursues the puck. Up the wall it goes for Massaro. Trying to find Proto off the bench, but couldn't. Proto then giving trouble as she forechecks. She gets a good whack in onto Solik. It was Letizio who was under pressure initially. But the Pioneers are backing away. Shot flexed away off the blocker by Ostrander. Rebound is picked up by Newberger, who plays it D to D to a hustling Delaney Gibbon. Gibbon up the board, she goes. The Pioneers, they'll get it right back. The Ravens just have had some difficulty in neutral ice. And it's really impeded their progress in terms of gaining offensive territory as the Pioneers once again get it in below the goal line. And, and halfway through the first period, you've only got one shot on net. And that one shot on net coming off a stick of Nicole Amato, you recall, very good opportunity there. So you're getting good opportunities when you get shots. So just do, again, whatever you can. You have to sacrifice something defensively, but all cylinders go. You're losing one nothing. They're already down in this game, yeah, as the Ravens change up. Here comes Stuvie though. Stuvie moving in below the goal line, out in front, off the skate, and Ostrander had to flex that one away. Now back up top, Doucette swiping at it, but it's a good keep there by Savannah Hersey. Now Carolyn drowning behind her own net. She's having some trouble. Prentice trying to hustle on to Lewis, who plays it in and around. Amato, the center, once again turns it over. Anna Klein banks it in and around Ostrander. It's it back, ground comes to pressure her, puck pops out in front, right to Doucette. Getting hooked a little bit there as she carries out. And the Pioneers force a turnover yet again in neutral ice. 8.40 left to go in this first period as Nicole Amato hounds down this puck. Ravens changing up, and a long shift for Amato. Guimont knocked that down off her skate. Pioneers are in the midst of a change right now, and they, I believe, are gonna get called for too many. And it has to happen right here. Let's Even. see. Yes, we're getting the too many players on the ice. And the Pioneers are going to be shorthanded. And Thomas O'Malley is not happy with that. The reigning NEWHA coach of the year. And now the Ravens, who, as Ezra just mentioned, one shot so far with about eight and a half minutes left to go. We'll get a power play opportunity here. And it, it has to happen. Even if you don't score a goal, you have to absolutely pepper Sarah Urban with Absolutely. shots because one, you got to catch up on the scoreboard and shots. I mean, you're losing five to one, and again, five shots in the first half period is, is eh. But I mean, just get some momentum going on your side on the power play. All three of the Ravens' goals in that five to three loss came on the power play. So see if that momentum can carry over here as Prentice has some trouble with this. Rolling puck is pushed out to neutral ice where 
Haley Donahue is on it. And she swivels one up ahead for Marissa Massaro. Massaro gains the line right through center. Had it hacked off her stick by Kelly Solik. Now in the corner, it's Parker, who works in behind the net, looking to possess. Parker leaves it there along the wall for Prentice. Prentice, six power play goals for her. As the puck is worked in behind, up the boards, Donahue holds it at the point. Hands it down low for Prentice. Shot went off her own player. Massaro, Prentice gets it back. He scores! And she scores! Shelf me! Bridget Prentice to the roof of the net. And we're tied up at one here with 7.39 left to go. It's a power play goal for the Ravens. And who else to get it but number 33, Bridget Prentice. Strictly power play goals for her. And it's 1-1. And, and a delayed penalty coming. I don't know if you saw the official's arm go up. But I believe it was going to be a, a, a yes. cross check in front of the net. Massaro fell down, blocked Prentice's first shot. But she, again, like I said, no hesitation. Right away, hopped on the rebound, got the puck, fired the puck, one quick motion, caught Urban off guard. 1-1 one, one game. You got it, and there it is. Because the Ravens were on a power play, they're going to stay on, reset the power play time. You get another two minutes to get another one. Marissa Leticio sitting in the box for the cross-checking call. So the Ravens right back on the power play after that as Newberger finds Nicole Amato, who gains the line. Amato serpentines her way in from a tight angle. Urban has to make a stick stop, and the Pioneers get a bit clear of the length of the ice. But Bridget Prentice tying things up, her 12th goal of the season. What a campaign it's been for the junior, who now has 22 points. Been a career year for Prentice on the Ravens' back end. Ravens right back in to make something happen as Amato protects along the wall. Gets it back in deep. Doucette in front, try to turn a shot on net, couldn't. Doucette hustles onto it. It's a good stick check there from Lewis. Doucette wins a puck battle. Down low she goes for Gilbride. Stick handles and finds Newberger. Katie Newberger fakes the shot. Now will take the shot. Pad saved by Urban. The rebound just got out of Amato's reach. And now it's Lewis to scoop it all the way back down to Ostrander's end of the Woods, 52 seconds left and counting on this Ravens power play. And and right there, you, you had Kiki Doucette, who, who good stick lift to get the puck, but the Sacred Heart player fell, and they wanted a penalty. Good non-call from the official. You, you love to see it. They're letting the players play. No contact made to the body. Right out in front, chance for Delaney Guimont, who's acting as a bit of a rover. She just missed Prentice all the way down low for Masaro in the corner, trying to protect against San Islo. Now finds Prentice, tries it again, pass save Urban, juicy rebound, chance is put off the goal post from Parker. Prentice holds the line, sauces it across, Parker couldn't stick handle her way by. And picking up the puck is Haley Payne. On a shorthanded rush, she'll gain the Ravens line and send it in with eight seconds left to go on the penalty. And you might not have scored on the second power play, but here's the deal, the ice is tilted now. The, the, the blood is pumping. The Ravens have scored one. You say, all right, we got one. Let's get a second one now. It, it's, it's all Ravens as of late. Offside the call here, 534 left to go in this first period. We are tied up at one here at the Sullivan Arena in Manchester, New Hampshire. Really late puck drop for us here. We were supposed to go on at 7 o'clock. Didn't jump on the airwaves until about 9. But we're happy to have you along with us here for what has been a really exciting one so far. These two teams, always a good matchup when the Pioneers and Ravens meet up as trying to stick handle her way by was Lexi Edwards trying to center off of Donahue. Donahue, though, gave it up right out in front. Chance from Edwards was blocked down. Emily Kramer now can't force it up the wall. It's held in there. Shot, stick saved by Ostrander. Rebound to the corner. And Margaret DeCicio trying to make a play on it. Kelsey Holmes trying to help her out. Donahue blocked down that chance from Samantha Shoebottom. And Haley Donahue now will do it all herself as she gains the red line, tries to fire it in, and takes a bit of a shot up high. It's run into again with a couple of checks up towards the helmet. She'll now peel off for a change as the Pioneers will try and rev it out. Kelly Solik, who's a bit of a rover herself, gains the line. Solik now cutting right, has a man going to the net. Solik taking a tour of the attacking zone. Back to the point, wild shot there from Edwards, careens wide. Brown is the first player on it. Up the board she goes, right in front of her own bench, pushed it forward. 
Could be trouble here as Drown has to scramble back into defensive position. Here comes Grimmer closing. Grimmer with a shot right on. Saved by Ostrander off the stick and the rebound up in the air. Swatted at with the catching glove. And Emmy Ostrander will hang on. And if you're the Ravens, the transition game, Ezra, is going to be a big problem here. This is a fast team in Sacred Heart. And they've already had some odd opportunities coming up the ice in terms of two-on-ones and the like. You just can't have that in the neutral ice in terms of transition. But you saw it there. Carolyn Drown, she got back. And while she did, she, she lifted the stick of the, 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 the odd man for Sager Hart and, and perfect defensive play to stop the two-on-one, make it a two-on-two -two as a back checker. Good stick check by Drown to win the battle against Grimmer. Scored the game's first goal. Now a centering attempt there. Good defensive awareness from Nicole Amato. And now Doucette finds Gilbride, who will flip this one in onto Urban, who knocks it down off the stick. Less than four minutes to go in the first period. As the Pioneers deep in their own territory, try and stick handle it out. Doucette forces a turnover. Amato right in the slot. She fanned on it. Ravens hold the line. And Delaney Guimont will just get it back in deep. Kiki Doucette. I like to describe her as a bit of a water bug. The way she just motors around the ice causes all sorts of havoc. As Guimont looks to hold the line, it's a tough pinch. Donahue's back defensively as Grimmer carries it over the line. Grimmer has a trailer. Payne, the shot, and a glove save by Ostrander. She hangs on to it. And there's that transition once again. Haley Payne right at about the top of the circle. Had a good look at the net. Ostrander, a fine stop there with the left hand. And you mentioned Tiki Doucet. You mentioned how you, you like to call her a water bug. I'll tell you why. I say this every time. I just love saying it. She might be the smallest player in the NEWHA. Five foot even. I will tell you what. She is the strongest player in the NEWHA. No one overpowers Kiki Doucet when she's on the ice. Prentice finds Massaro, who put it behind Sugar. She couldn't find it. And now it is Jordan Sanislo up the boards. Stuvi moves it forward. Klein is in over the line. Klein looking for Lewis driving to the slot, unable to get it to go. Now Parker has some trouble getting it out. Massaro, good keep there by Stuvi. That was close. Centering attempt there, knocked down by Katie Newberger. And now Parker trying to go across the zone to Sugar. Love down there and got to stop Hand it here. Pass. Hand pass is in fact the call and Ravens perhaps Got lucky that that was it as Massaro had shoved down Jane Lewis to the ice. But the faceoff will come back into Pioneers territory. The teams are still at five on five strength. No call coming on the play. 2.42 left to go in the first period as well. An exciting first period. Yes. That one might I say. As Proto tries to get on this puck, Drown couldn't hold the line. Jostles back, gets to it first. D to D she goes to Haley Donahue. Donahue to Holmes. Loose puck kicks around. Carolyn Drown's got some space. She gains the line. Drown with a shot off of Bryant's skates and into the corner. Drown hustling as she activates herself offensively. Now she'll peel back to her point position as the Pioneers will try and bank, break out. Cleary banks this pass ahead. No icing call here. Good hustle from Edwards. She wins the race. Tries to center right to the front. Nobody was home. DeCicio finds Proto. Two on two they go. Proto drops it off. DeCicio gains the line. Chance comes in onto Urban. She covers up. Desisio going hard to the net. Trying to give Sarah Urban a hard time. And we saw that same strategy last time these two teams played at the Jason Ritchie Ice Arena. The Ravens were crashing the crease hard. And it seemed to work as they were down 5-1. to one and made it a 5-3 game with seven minutes left just about in that third period. And you're, you're playing against the NEWHA goalie of the year. You have to do everything you can. Got a stoppage here. Meg Gilbride got herself tied up with a pioneer along the far side wall. I don't believe a, call, a penalty was called. I think their helmets just got tied up. It's definitely the uh, the J clips. I'll tell yep. you what. Yep. Whenever you whenever you have a little bit of hang, you get a little bit of sty going. You have a hang on your cage. Your J clips come uh, <laughs> a little wild. It's a clean faceoff win for Amato. Shot by Guimont. Blocked down. Could be numbers here as Newberger knocks that down off her ankles. Trying to get in behind was Maddie Bishop. As the Ravens send this puck back in, Kelly Solik in behind her own net, stops and now starts. Solik looking through her options, right up the gut she goes. Bishop's in, Bishop, and a big save by Ostrander off the chest protector. Maddie Bishop snuck right in as she split the defense as the Ravens now ice the puck. Despite Doucette's hustle and with 120 left in the first period, a huge save by the freshman, and we've seen that one before, Ezra, right there. And we, we spoke about it before we got on, that we think that Emmy Ostrander got snubbed for goalie of the year. Went yeah. across the ice, 
to Sarah Urban. So if I'm, if I'm Emmy Ostrander, this is a statement game. I'm saying, you know what, that should, that should be my award. My name should be on that title right now. So Right out in front, a chance was fanned on there by Stuvie, and it clears the zone. The Ravens will get fresh legs out as we tick towards the final minute. Big save, though, by Ostrander on a clear breakaway from Hetty Bishop, who got right in between the Ravens' defense. As this puck is sent on in. Brown backhands it up the wall for Haley Parker, who will bring it right back to Carolyn Drown. Final minute of play here in this first period. 50 seconds and counting as Prentice tangled up a bit there in a board battle with Lewis. Now back to the point it comes. D to D they go. Shot blocked down off of Parker. In front, it's loose. And Prentice able to skate away with it. Bridget Prentice has Parker to her left. Prentice follows it all the way in. Now tries to center. Banks off the boards. Drown will try it. That goes wide. Anna Klein now has it in her own end. 25 seconds left to go. Pioneers looking to break out here as Stuvie will gain the red line. Puck goes off of Drown's stick. She has to hustle onto it. Tight turn around her net and leaves it smartly there for Bridget Prentice with about 12 seconds left in the period. Ravens just looking to get out of this period unscathed. Sugar in front of the Pioneers bench with five seconds to go. Puck pinned along there. Two seconds and one. 20 minutes in the books. Here in Manchester, 1-1 our score between the Pioneers and the Ravens in Ben Arena in Manchester, second period. Just a few moments from getting started here between the Pioneers of Sacred Heart and the Ravens of Franklin Pierce. 1-1 One -one our score through 20 minutes of play and it's really sort of a tale of two periods as for Franklin Pierce, a real lethargic start. They were really sloppy on pucks. They weren't getting it out effectively. Sacred Heart took advantage of that, too. The ice was open. A two-on-one rush led to the game's first goal by Victoria Grimmer. Then the Ravens got a power play, though, and you said it. This is a chance to really turn the tides here. Even if you don't score, get some shots on net and pepper Sarah Urban, who is a very good goaltender in her own right, number one in white. And the Ravens did just that. They got the tying goal from Bridget Prentice, number 33 on defense, who just continues to have... Such a successful junior season now, 22 points for her in what is game number 30 of the season. And what about eight power play goals, seven power play goals, whatever it might be? I believe she has six, or now seven, of her 12 goals coming on the power play. I mean, whoa, whoa. She posted to Instagram today, strictly power play goals, and she's living up to that captioner. If she didn't post it, I believe somebody, a friend of hers, commented on the post, strictly power play goals. and. Bridget Prentice certainly living up to that moniker as the Ravens tied it up with the advantage, and they really got some great momentum after that as with the power play following that up. Haley Parker rings the post to the short side of Sarah Urban, and that could have certainly changed the tide of this game had that puck gone in in terms of offensive momentum, back-to-back -back power play goals. And that, I mean, it's such a different story. First of all, 2-1, to one, different story. You're coming into the third, second period with a one-goal lead. But say you didn't score that power play goal. Say Bridget Prentice hit the post or, or she didn't get that puck and they, they called the whistle, whatever it might be. You're losing one nothing coming in the second period. The, the mental state that you're in in the locker room when you're losing one nothing in a playoff game, in the first round, in a semifinal, whatever it is, when you're losing, it is, sucks. Your head's down. You don't want to go back out yep. there. You gave up a, an early goal. You're, you're sluggish. But they scored one, and I guarantee you they're happy. They're laughing, and that's what you want to be. You don't want to be too too content with where you are, but you want to be happy. You want to be laughing. You want to be lighthearted because that's how you win games, when you're having fun. Winning is fun. Yep. Losing's not. You want to have fun, you got to win, win games. The game tends to come so much easier when you're in a good mood and when you're in a good state of mind. I know we've both played it, and we both have been there on the ice as players. It's just night and day difference playing when you're – in a good mood or when you're tired or when you're ahead or when you're feeling good about the way you're playing versus when if you're not playing well. And I think for Franklin Pierce, we saw that in that period. The opening six to seven minutes of it were really, really poor. The Ravens were sloppy. They looked a little lethargic. They weren't moving their feet. Sacred Heart was. And all of a sudden, things changed, and the Ravens got that tying goal, and they really pushed the pace of things afterwards. But I want to go back to that play with 120 just about left. A clear-cut breakaway from Maddie Bishop steaming in down on Emmy Ostrander. She makes a big-time save late in the period. What's that going to do momentum-wise for this team when your goalie comes up with such a timely stop? Well, first of all, it keeps it a, a tie game. That's just huge. And I swear, I, I didn't look. I should have looked. Every single 
one of the Ravens players who are on the ice better have gone and tapped her on Believe the pads. Believe he gave her at least a little bit of love. But, but <laughs> th that tells you, that tells you right then and there. Okay, maybe we can take a couple of risks and and, and play off. Don't give up a breakaway, <laughs> but take a couple of risks. you got Emmy Asha. I mean, she's literally, literally a brick wall in, in between the pipes. She, she is, it is unbelievable. Her freshman year and she's taking the lead by storm. She certainly has as they squeegee off the last bit of residue this Samboni here at the Sullivan Arena has been put through the ringer today. A triple overtime game between the Hawks and Greyhounds on the men's side of things in the NE10 semifinal round. And then another three periods as St. Anselm took on St. Michael's on the women's side of things. And now the last one here coming two hours after it was initially supposed to start. Been a busy day for the folks working down don't, here. Don't forget those six minutes. And those two six minutes six as well, minutes. yes. As we're back underway here, second period. Ravens going from right to left here for the middle stanza. As Nicole Amato will poke it and now cut and fire and a glove save by Urban. Nine seconds into the period, she's tested and she comes up with a very nice left-handed snag. And this is the start you want. This is the start you need yep. in the second period. We see a lot of times the Ravens will come out slow in the start of the period. Not just the first, but the second and the third. Because you go to locker room, your blood stops. You're not moving, you're not doing anything. Very uncharacteristic, like, of the Ravens to come out firing. But, it, I mean, it's working, so keep doing it. Doucette trying to play it back in deep to Amato. Ravens now trying to backtrack here as Klein through center. Prentice intercepts her bank pass. Buck is sent back in. Prentice, D to D she goes to Katie Newberger. Newberger trying to get it up to Doucette. Can't connect. Doucette now in there with Marissa Massaro in behind the cage. Massaro trying to... Muck it free from Jordan San Islo, and she does. Now cutting and shooting. Puts it wide to the glove side of Urban. Rebound is picked up by Delaney Guimont, ever the rover. Spins it down low for Ali Sugar. Sugar stick handles in the corner. Stopping and starting nicely against San Islo. Swivels down low now to Parker. Parker, Guimont from the wall. The shot punched away by Urban. Rebound taken by Parker. Stuff attempt there. Urban shuts it down along the short side. Parker wins a puck battle. Has it now far side. Parker, stick handles, over she goes to Guimont. Guimont shooting, looking for a tip, but she puts it wide. Rebound is picked up off the boards by Grimmer, and the Pioneers, under some early duress, look to get it out. As Massaro looks to hold it in, and she does. Here's Parker, meanwhile, trying to bank it in deep. Parker finds Massaro, who shoots. That's through the blue paint and out. Urban may have gotten her stick on that, as the Pioneers finally get it out to neutralize. Great start here for the Ravens through about a minute and a half. Meanwhile, though, Pioneers right back in. Shot, and Ostrander with the glove flags it down and hangs on as Maddie Bishop with another good look at the Ravens net. and She's been all over the place. So you know we're going to talk about Jane Lewis and Anna Klein and the big gunners for the Pioneers, but Maddie Bishop, 19 points in 31 games this season. She has the primary assist on Grimmer's goal, and she's had some really good looks at the net so far. And you, you, could, you can win some games by having two real – Goal score. Whoa, look out here. DeCicio going onto the net. Got taken out by Nicole Goody. And there is no further infraction coming. A bit late, but just a good hard rush to the net. DeCicio is going to do that. Off the draw, DeCicio trying to go right to goal. Lost it. Ravens now trying to back check, check here as the Pioneers move in, potentially three on two. In over the line. It's dropped off to the point. Shot never got through. Follow-up chance, though, right out in front is just pushed wide by Shoebottom. And the Ravens survive as Steph Proto looks to get it out. She gets some help from Carolyn Brown. Here comes Lexi Edwards. She'll fire right on. Ostrander the save, and she'll reel it back in for the whistle. Another close call, though, right in front of the Ravens' crease. There was plenty of those in the first period. Fortunately for Franklin Pierce, none of them really connected. Just a lot of scrambling moments out in front, but you got to tighten up the front of the net here if you're the Ravens. And it, it all starts in the offensive zone, on the offensive zone draw. Every single one of the Ravens' forwards attacked the puck. So one pass beat all three forwards, and they got an odd man rush going for Sacred Heart on the other side of the ice. Doucette banks the pass ahead. She was not over the red line, though, so we've got icing here against the Ravens. So the faceoff will come back to Ostrander's end. It's coming to her left, 17.32 left to go, early stages of the second. Tied up at one still, as off this draw, it's a clean win for the Pioneers, but Guimont 
aggressively gets after it. Puck gets sent in. Nicola Mato in the middle of her own end. Meg Gilbride tried to one-hand it forward, but missed. Now Doucette in puck pursuit. Can't get to it. Good aggressive play by Guimont, but she lost it as Solik will flip this. Going wide of the cage. Ostrander stops it off the blade of her stick. And if you're, if you're Guimont there and you're going to step on the play, it has to be 100% puck. Look out here. Lead pass. Sugar trying to get a step onto Solik. She's in. A backhand. And Urban's got it in the paraphernalia. Good hustle back by Kelly Solik to force Sugar to her backhand. Nonetheless, though, Urban coming up with a fine save off the breakaway rush. And, and a good move, how about, by Allie yep. Sugar. She opened up her stick blade a little bit, made it look like she was going to go forehand, and pulled it back last second. Of course, Urban had to make it an, actually a very nice save, kind of shut the, the, the puck out with her, her arm, kind of close using, it in there against her body. Using the right arm there along with the blocker. This puck comes to Donahue indirectly. She'll try it, redirect it off a of body and wide to Urban's blocker side. Carolyn Drown now pinching. In there, though, is Bishop. And now Bishop will skate it out. She has, she's had herself a fine game as she cuts in, fires a shot, blocked down off of Donahue. And Donahue breaks it out nicely to Parker. Bailey Parker gains the red line and plays that one off of Kelly Turney. Who Back a goaltender for the Ravens who mimics a bit of a windmill there. It's been a real good season in the Ravens' crease. All three goaltenders have seen some playing action, but Emmy Ostrander is really just taking the bull by the horns here in terms of the playing time. And you and I were both a bit surprised that she did not get the goaltender of the year honor. Instead, it was Sarah Urban, her counterpart here tonight. Back-to-back -back years now for Urban, now a senior. Though so she's no slouch either. 18 wins for her, just to four losses. She has never lost to the Ravens, too, at that. As Kelsey Holmes gains the line, 6-0-1 in her career against the Ravens. As Newberger holds the line, flipping one wide of off of rather Urban. We'll be saying their names a lot though tonight. We've already have. Both of them have been tested as DeCicio trying to center. Unable to. Ravens looking to change up as DeCicio four checks. Franklin Pierce just with three full lines of forwards. It's been that way mostly all season. Emily Kramer acting as the extra skater up front as it's icing here on the play. Sacred Heart, meanwhile, four full lines. They've got six, or uh, rather, seven defensemen dressed. It's a very deep team for Coach O'Malley. And sitting, sitting right in front of us, they got six or seven scratches. Yeah. So, so, so really, you've got a full <laughs> roster. You've got 23, yeah. 24 skaters on your roster versus you've got the Ravens who don't even have enough to put up a full dressed 18 or 19 and three. So the Ravens really look for the third period. They, they, they've done pretty well, stay yep. conditioned, but look for the third period. They have to be as conditioned as possible to stay afloat against the Sacred Heart team. Meg Gilbride doing some yeoman's work on the four check. Puck is fired in off of Donahue on the long dump and attempt from Bryant. Ravens now trying to transition as Amato works in. Cuts by Stuvi. Amato working one on three. She's eventually closed off. Gives her teammates some time to change up here. As Parker comes on, trying to put the pressure onto Nicole Goody, forces her in behind her own net. And Goody has to spin a pass to open ice. As Parker and Sugar now converge onto Katie Stuvey, who will break out here. Stuvey has Lewis far side. Lewis, top of the circle, pass across. Good cancellation there by Carolyn Drown, who intercepted it nicely. Pioneers possessing, though. Prentice impeded Lewis on the shot. Now Massaro to Sugar. Ravens just looking to get it out, and Sugar does. But it comes right to Savannah Hersey, who will send that in off the glass. And I, I like this defensive system that the Ravens are playing. They're playing a box and one. So they've got their, their box. They've got their defensemen and wingers making that, that penalty kill box. And they've got their center just roaming around as the, that one, trying to put some pressure, going back and forth and up and down onto the puck. Sugar gains the red line and will peel off for a change. We've played six minutes into this second period. Still tied up at one, but both teams have had some good looks. Here as Massaro blows a tire, trying to forecheck. Good individual rush here by Maddie Bishop, who gains the line. Now trying to chop it. This puck was pain, but it was blocked down. And now Newberger in her own end will backtrack and look for an option. Laney Guimont goes right up the weak side, finds Proto, put it through the legs of Holmes. But good awareness by DeCicio to pick it up. And Margaret DeCicio gains the line. 
Had her pocket picked momentarily by Grimmer. Now Newberg with a shot. Tipped right on. Pad save, Urban. Proto jamming away. Decisio. Urban makes a pad save in tight. As that puck was tipped on the way through, but the third line gets a real good look. As the puck is flipped into Ravens territory. Shoe bottom on it. Guimont there first. Clubs it up the wall. Decisio just got a piece of it to negate the icing. She'll peel off for a change. She was the one that redirected that shot. Steph Proto took a whack at it, and then DeCicio got stoned by the right pad of Urban. And As this puck is sent ahead. This will be icing. And you know better than I do. I mean, you were a goalie. High school hockey and up. I mean, how, how hard is it to track a puck that gets redirected? It is definitely not the easiest thing that comes with the position. You're set. You're in your stance. You've got your hands in good position. You're ready to just... Watch that puck into whichever part of your body, and then all of a sudden it's going in a completely different direction. So that was a real good reaction there by Urban. And then she had to make a second save off of DeCicio as Gilbride trying to twirl a backhand in front. She had a Monto crashing, but it just didn't have enough gas on it to get to the front. And it's picked up here by San Islo, looped in onto Ostrander, who plays it off the bounce. And now Drown goes to Donahue, who finds Meg Gilbride, or rather not. But Gilbride wins it back. Amato, big collision there. And Amato is shaken up. She got hit by Marissa Letizio, and she'll head off to the bench. We'll keep our eye out on that. You hope that that is not a serious injury as Drown will flip this. Ooh, Urban tried to shortstop catch it and couldn't. And then, oh, Carolyn Drown just went head first into the boards. Oh, my. And, and oh she, my. she blew a tire. She just... Oof. Oh, that is not good. And she's in a good deal of pain. Totally incidental. We're going to take a step away here. Carolyn Drown is down. We'll give you an update as soon as we can. You're listening to Raven Sports Network right here on Facebook Live. We're back here after what was just a really scary incident. Carolyn Drown was pursuing a loose puck and she blew a tire and went literally head first into the boards. Got off the ice somewhat under her own power, had some help from the athletic trainer. But when that first happened, Ezra, I thought, oh my goodness, we could potentially have to get a stretcher out there and everything. I mean, it looked like a pretty vicious collision. I mean, dangerous, dangerous. Yeah, situation dangerous is there, there right there. You, no matter. Who it is, when it is, oh, what absolutely. it is, you hate to see hate it. Hate to see it. And, you really do. And hopefully it's nothing major. Hopefully she got out unscathed. But, man, that's a scary situation to be in for the players and the coaches, for everybody in the arena. Carolyn Drown has had a fine season. The sophomore out of Bridgewater, Massachusetts, 15 points for the Ravens on the back end. She's played top pairing minutes at times with Bridget Prentice. She's been very valuable. As the Ravens try for a home run pass, they connect to Parker. Parker then gets tripped up. Ravens going back on the power play. Haley Parker draws the call against Marissa Letizio, who's made a couple of trips to the penalty bench for the Pioneers. But we'll definitely keep our eye out on Carolyn Drown and give you an update, as well as Nicole Amata, who got roughed up in a collision just outside her blue line. And, I mean, they're going to call that a trip. I love the call. She got her. It was not knee to knee, but it was, I guess you could say leg. shin to shin. Yeah, you could say leg. But More but leg than stick. A, a great play by uh, by Haley Parker. And this Ravens power play already got one. Looking for two now. And Margaret DeCicio is operating at the point. Nicole Amato's back out there. She's with Meg Gilbride and Kiki Doucette. DeCicio and Katie Newberger out there on the point. As Meg Gilbride... Picks up this pass from Katie Newberger and gains the zone. Gilbride with a shot saved by Irvin off the cuff of her glove. Rebound taken by Doucette. Back up top to DeCicio. She'll try a shot. Stick saved by Irvin. Rebound collected by Gilbride. Newberger. Good keep by DeCicio to just play it back in deep. First player on it is Goody. Up the board she goes. Payne trying to force it out. Can't. Puck comes to Newberger, middle of the point. Now Gilbride, she just heals the one-timer. She had it, though. 
on her strong side. Amato, great pass across. Gilbride, two oh, seven tip. Go. She scores. What a cycle there by the Ravens. Cross zone they go, and it's another power play goal. And Kiki Doucette tips it past Sarah Urban and the Ravens for the first time tonight. Lead here. It's two to one with 10:32 to go. And not not a ton of goals this year. For the freshman. No, just her third. Out of Bridgewater, Massachusetts. I mean, third. that's her third goal. But what a time to score your third goal. On the power play, in the playoffs, semifinals. And I, I, she's so hard to see on the ice, coming in at five foot even. But I saw her right back door. I'm saying back door, back door. And she found her. Beautiful tip in. Amato going from right to left to Gilbride, who slid it right back in front to Doucette, who redirected it past Urban. Pretty look there on the power play for the Ravens. That's now five straight against Sacred Heart on the power play for Franklin Pierce. As Asaro can't glove it down. Prentice stands up at her own line, then gets taken down. I believe the puck, though, was offside. It's been a chippy game here. We've seen some good contact, and the refs haven't called a checking penalty yet, knock on wood. And I've made my opinion on that call pretty well known. It's been it's been but all year long. We've been saying let them let them play. Let them let play. The, let the bodies. It's unless, a physical game. Unless you've got like a, a clear clear penalty, Absolutely. huge open ice hit, dirty hitters, the like of it. As this puck right out in front, Pioneers couldn't get a stick on it. But hopefully we don't see anything like that, as it's really just a call that I don't agree with. I understand it's a part of the rules, but I just wish that it was. Something that I hope I hope see change as perhaps the game grows along and continues to develop in the real positive way that it has on the woman's side of things. As Katie Stuvey back in her own end, stick handles and passes a puck ahead. Picking it up now is Klein. Newberger trying to, or rather Holmes, galloping back defensively. Pass across, good stick there. And then Ostrander makes a right pad save. Puck pushed back out in front. That was a broken play. Now the Ravens might have a three-on-two rush back the other way. As in over the line comes Kramer with a shot. Deflected wide. Off of Savannah Hersey. Well, I'll tell that you. That was a broken play right there, and Ostrander had to be alert to that one as the Ravens force a turnover. Holmes finds Prentice. Prentice with a shot, blocked down. That one stung Stuvey, hit her right in the shin. And the Pioneers get it clear. Stuvey will hobble her way to the bench. I'll tell you what, I Emmy mean, Ostrander does her stretches every night before bed. <laughs> oh, so, man, that split to get across from post to post to make that save. Carolyn Drown is back, and she fires a shot that misses to the stick side of Urban. That is a good sign to see as she attacks there. Amato, so fresh off the bench, Meg Gilbride. And Gilbride will pitch for a backhander in that Urban stops off the backhand of her goal stick. 8.35 left to go, second period. Ravens ahead, 2-1 to one on a power play goal from Kiki Doucette. As the Pioneers come right back in, shot punched away by Ostrander. As she got the blocker on Nicole Goody's shot. Now the Ravens, Massaro put a puck that Amato could not find. Now Bishop finds Payne in over the line, near side. Payne trying to stick handle. Good play there by Delaney Guimont defensively to tie her up. And the Ravens have it here, looking to move it up the wall. Shot from the half wall there by Payne was blocked down by Haley Donahue. Donahue just buying time as she's under pressure from shoe bottom. Finds Guimont, who banks it up the boards and out to Doucette, who now has Amato trying to split. Nicole Amato in, taking and scoring! Simply salacious from Nicole Amato and it's 3-1 Ravens! And a smooth, like a hot knife through Ooh. butter move from the forehand. I mean, she's a lefty, so from the forehand to the backhand, just slick. I mean, don't get me wrong, Sarah Urban's a great, great goalie, you're but not you're, not, you're not stopping that one when you've got, you've got hands like Amato who, let me remind you, Single season record in program history, most goals. Just scores another one here for the Ravens, who now have a two goal lead over the Sacred Heart Pioneers. Sacred Heart burning their time out here. 7.50 left to go in this second period. The Ravens now up by two. And an even strength goal, a rare even strength goal against the Pioneers for the Ravens. But that was a thing of beauty right there from Nicola Mata, who's now got 22 goals on the season, which is just astounding. And how about Kiki Doucette? I mean, that pass, right on the money to, to, to get the breakaway going. She gets her second point of the game, her sixth assist on the season. I mean, she's she's gone from seven points to nine points here. I mean, she's really having herself a day, huh? Make no mistake, though, Ezra, a lot of hockey still left to go in this game. And the two-goal lead, a dangerous one. 
the most the most as i like to say yes that false sense of security it can give you if you're the ravens foot has to be on the gas here for the next 27 minutes and 50 seconds of hockey i'm gonna i'm gonna refer to my broadcasting book and i'm gonna say the next goal is a big one absolutely my friend i couldn't agree with you more as the pioneers fresh off the timeout seem to have a bit of a jump in their step as lewis sends one to the front nobody home though as this puck is flipped out of play face off to come inside franklin pierce territory so nicola matos got 22 goals now coming into tonight her along with fellow sophomores haley parker and marissa massaro have combined for nearly 50 percent of this team's total offense tonight though ezra Goals from Bridget Prentice and Kiki Doucette. You love to see the secondary scoring stepping up for Franklin Pierce. And I said it earlier, you, you can win some games with only a few big goal scorers. You really have to have a full team effort, and that's what the Ravens have here tonight, is a full team effort. Puck loose in front as fanning on that initial shot there was a pioneer. Ravens are back in, though. Sugar chipping and chasing, trying to put some pressure on to Stuvey. Puck banked ahead. Klein now backtracking. Bottom of the left wing circle. Nice pass on there. Lewis under the blade, though, of Stuvie stick. Newberger turns it over to Klein, who then blew a tire. Parker got around a defender. Now gains the line, trying to dangle. Lost it, though. Pioneers trying to break now the other way. Payne in over the line. Cutting now right. Great play there, though, from Bridget Prentice to poke it away from her. As Marissa Massaro in for defensive support. It's been a long shift for her. She looks gassed as Steph Proto now in her own end. Has some open ice. Stick handles and now gallops through center. Proto passes on there. Sugar, it's been a long shift for her as well. She finally steps off. DeCicio hopping out there with Holmes now to join Proto. As the Pioneers coming right back in. Some nice stick handling. Good play though by DeCicio at her own line. Ravens have tightened things up in neutral ice. As Proto stepping by. Backhands to the front. But comes to DeCicio. Turns and shoots and it's blocked down there. Off the stick of Nicole Goody. For two, it is bounced there for Franklin Pierce. They cannot get it to go. And you mentioned that the Ravens have really tightened up the neutral zone. They're running a 1-3-1. A one, one. It's doing what it's supposed to do is they're stopping them so they can just dump the puck in and set back up in the offensive zone. Less than six minutes to go in the second period. Ravens have tacked on two goals here in the middle stanza. The Pioneers will look to respond. Bishop gains the red line. Fires one wide of Ostrander. Puck comes out the other side. Donahue under quick pressure. Turnover taken there by Cleary, who puts it in behind the Ravens' net. Picking it up here is Edwards. Whipped to the front off the stick of Ostrander. And out the other side. Solik picks it up. Stick handles her way by. She tries to cut to the bottom of the left wing circle. It's picked up, though, and sent in deep by Paganelli. Back to the point. And a shot there was blocked down. Ostrander getting all sorts of tangled up with a pioneer in front. The Ravens are going to go back on the power play. Ostrander's got to make the long skate as Drown will fire a shot. Blocker save. I believe it was going to be offside, though. So, unfortunately for the Ravens, it won't be an attacking zone draw for them, but they're going to go back on the power play. Yes, it is. Yes, Goaltender interference, likely the call. Offensive zone draw. There we go. I think I believe it's only an icing that'll keep it out of the offensive zone. But Gotcha. I actually did not know that. <laughs> yeah, there we I go. Mean, We're learning I mean, things here. USA Hockey referee. No, hey, that's, that's not right. a big deal. Got to flex that. Always have to flex that, that you have that referee knowledge it's great that you have it because <laughs> there are some times where things can get confusing ravens trying to make it three straight on the power play parker with a shot it's blocked down though there by bryant sitting in the box is lexi edwards interference is the call pioneers get a clear the ravens two of their three on the power play they are two of three with the power play here this evening as donahue finds guimont who finds prentice Three defenders out right now on the power play for the Ravens as Prentice drops this puck off. Parker trying to get a stick on it. Stuvey trying to clear it from her knees. Prentice finds Parker. Buck 20 left on the power play. Donahue under pressure. Able to get it back in deep. Prentice trying to hustle on it. San Islo got there first. Parker tied up. Back to the point. Donahue with a shot deflecting wide. Bodies on the ice as Guimon is tied up with a pioneer. Back to the point, it comes for Donahue. Down low she goes. Prentice with a shot off the outside of the net. You saw the strings tingle there just a little bit. Guimont then plants a player. That's going to be a checking call coming up. We're going to have four on four for 51 seconds. It's getting chippy here with 4.08 left to go in the second period. I, I like the chippiness, but 
I mean, not a smart penalty though yeah, for Delaney Guimont to take. If you're if you're Delaney Guimont, you got to know you, you you can't. You're yep. on the power play. You've you've struck twice now on the power play. You're red hot. And you've got the man advantage, and now that's 51 seconds where you have an opportunity on on the power play. That you're not going to get it. And on the mean meantime, now that's a minute and nine that Sager Hart has with the man advantage after the four on four. So we've got four on four for the next 47 seconds, and then the Pioneers will get an abbreviated power play. Four minutes left to go in the second period. Ravens ahead by two. Pioneers looking to get themselves back into this game. As it's worked back to the point, here's a shot wide of Ostrander's stick side. Now Newberger paddles a backhander up the wall, but the Ravens cannot get it out. Back to the point, now worked down low. Grimmer, good keep there by Goody. At the line, it's held as trying to stick handle her way by there was a pioneer. Now it's handed back, shot through the blue paint. As paraphernalia is all over, Kennedy Spearing, who's that seventh defenseman, lost her glove, shot. Great shot block by Nicole Amato as it comes all the way out. Power play just about to start now for the Pioneers as Edwards will exit the box. 3.15 left to go in the period. A minute and five on Guimont's penalty. So Ravens now on the kill as Spearing's stick and glove still hang around. Back to the point. Solik will drive it. Another shot block from Prentice, and it leaves the zone. And how about the shot blocking here? I mean, big part of having a good penalty kill is getting bodies in front of the shots and in the lanes and blocking those shots. So, I mean, like you said, best power play in the league. It's really showing when you look at the block shots number. Ravens PK at 88.5% or 88.6%. Sorry, I was a point off. Shot another shot block there as Amato took that one up high. And while we always highlight Nicole for offensive prowess, the defensive side of things, she's the Ravens' second line center. And the center obviously has that responsibility. She's shown that here really throughout the course of her career at Franklin Pierce. And she's really just a 200 foot player. And that's what makes her so good is if you want to be very good, you have to be a 200 foot player. That's the difference between good and great. Solik across, she goes to Goody. Trying to go back across the grain to Klein. Solik, Coxon fakes the shot. Now Klein from the circle. Shot redirected in front off a of body and into the protective netting. 2.05 left to go. The Ravens kill off Guimont's penalty. And we're back to five on five here late in the second period. And that if that if that shot was a second earlier, Sacred Heart is still on the power play. So the fact that Frank and Pierce now has that even strength and has that five fifth body back on the ice, that is huge. Huge, because then you've got to get out from the box and all the way back down your defensive end if you're Delaney Guimont. So so a, a good break for the, the Ravens. Massaro won the draw. Newberger plays it around. Parker, stick handles. She's getting hooked up there. Puck comes offside and is touched up by a pioneer. That's not offside. Oh, no, that's, rather not. That's, that's They're going to make that call there. That's an official not alignment. They're going to call that hook. They're on, calling uh, that a hook on, on Samantha Shoebottom. And so the Ravens are back on a power play with less than two minutes to go. And I was going to say, Ezra, there was some stick work there around Parker's hands. I wasn't sure if the call was coming. Very late. It Very was. Very late. It call. was. I mean, but the stick of shoe bottom did get up around Parker's hands. So we've got a hooking call on the play. And the Ravens will look to add to their lead here with 150 now left to go in the second period. As Haley Parker has it and banks it up the wall. It's a tough bounce, though, and it comes. All the way out. Donnie has to hustle onto it. She makes a good play, chipping it up the wall. Now Massaro tries to get on it, but it comes back to the point, and Bryant just clears it out to neutral ice. Ravens will try and settle things down as the Pioneers come right back in. Lewis with a shot. Austria to the save. Pop up rebound. It lands wide to her right. And Ostrander was able to get her blocker on it as Delaney Guimont will now skate it up with 116 left to go in the second. And Margaret DeCicio, or rather Haley Donnie, stick handling by. Finds Haley Parker. Drop passes on. Shot. And Urban will flag that down with the catching glove. 105 left in the second period. 113 left in Shoebottom's hooking call. So the Ravens will have a little bit of time to begin the third period, but nothing to do enough damage with. Looking to make it a 4 1 lead here in the late stages of the second. And what, what a boost it would be having that three-goal lead. Such a different mindset having that three-goal lead than a two-goal lead. I mean, Final minute here. Doucette tried the no-look backhand pass across the crease to Amato. But Urban, with an active stick, able to block the pass. That would have been 
just beautiful had it connected. This line has had a fantastic game as Amato wins another faceoff. Newberger shot intentionally wide, comes out the other side. Amato gets it across. Gilbride drives one again off the side of the net. Urban was there, though, in good position. 42 seconds left to go. Drown holds the line. Doucette at the goal line. Plays it for Amato. Now Doucette as she emerges. Amato trying to give and go. It's off a of Pioneer. Stabbed away by Urban. Right out in front. Amato couldn't get her stick on it. It's taken now there by Doucette. Set back down low, Amato, 25 seconds left in the period. Amato, bottom of the circle, across for Gilbride. She shoots, saved by Urban, and she does not have it, and the puck finds its way into the net, but it's waved off by the official, and with 17.2 seconds left to go, the Pioneers may have just dodged a bullet as the referee appeared to lose sight of it. I, I that puck was it. poked in, but Urban made the initial save I thought that she had the catching glove on it, but I think it was stuck in between her pads and ended up getting in behind her. That That's a good call from the official. But, he he was waving it off, yep. and then the Ravens yep. put the puck in the back If you of can't net. see it, you got to blow it dead. And, and that's what happened there. And you get it all the time. You're going to be mad if it goes against you. You're going to be happy if it goes for you. Exactly. That time it goes against you, you're going to take it. You're going to take it. You, just, you have no other choice. Ravens trying to force a turnover here with less than 10 seconds to go. Pioneers just trying to lead off the clock. Five seconds as it's worked into the corner, two seconds and one, and the period will come to a conclusion. The Ravens, after giving up the game's first goal, have routed off the next three. They've got a three to one lead here, heading into the final period of this semifinal contest. And, and they came into the period down eight shots to six. They exit the third period up 19 shots to seven. I mean, wow, uh, just 19 shots to 17, sorry. Mm. Um, just, just it's a good they period. Won, they won that period on the scoreboard, on the shot board, on the shot block board, on on every single board there is. They they won that period. That was a very dominant period for the Ravens. Looking over at the Ravens bench, Delaney Gima is getting attended to by the athletic trainer. So another thing to keep our eye on. We've seen Nicole Amato and Carolyn Drown get dinged up in this game. Delaney Guimon, another prominent defender for the Ravens. You certainly hope that her injury isn't too severe as the Ravens have a two-goal lead and they'll have seven seconds of a power play. So not much to work with, Ezra, but they are buzzing, both at even strength now and five-on-five. Five. For the longest time, it felt like the power play was really going to be their only source of offense, but they've got an even strength goal in that period thanks to Nicole Amato, and they've looked to really take the pace of this game to their favor at five-on-five. Five. And, and that seven seconds, it gives you a second to win a face-off and then get set up in the offensive yep. zone for Sacred Heart. You, you get that opportunity that you wouldn't necessarily get in a five-on-five -five situation. So that seven seconds could be a, a huge part in the next goal of the game. Certainly, as Franklin Pierce up by two now with goals in that period from Kiki Doucette on the power play. She got her third of the season from Meg Gilbride and Katie Newberger, and then Nicole Amato on just an individual rush deked right into goal and slid a nice backhand tuck past the outstretched left leg of Sarah Urban. Guimont and Doucette picking up points there. That second line of Nicole Amato and Me Me Nicole Amato, Meg Gilbride, and Kiki Doucette, excuse me, has arguably been the Ravens' best so far here through 40 minutes. And they, they started the game, and I, I guarantee you that was Coach Stockdale. Either on the way here or in the locker room pregame, he was looking around and saying, all right, who, who, who do I think is going to have a good game today? Who? who had a good warm-up, yep. who had a good bus ride, who had a good day. And I, I think he felt that second line didn't. And boy, did he make a good guess. He made a good call so far through 40 minutes as they have combined for the bulk of the Ravens' offense so far. But still, 20 minutes left to play here at the Sullivan Arena. The Ravens up by two over the Pioneers and 20 minutes away from punching their ticket into the NEWHA championship match, which will be held tomorrow in this building. Ezra and I will be back for the call of the third period in about 12 minutes from Manchester when we return. It's winning time, my friend, as we get set for the third period. You're listening to Raven Sports Network right here on Facebook Live. Twisting this backhand in was Jordan Sanisto. The Ravens outshot 
Pioneers 13 to nine in that second period. There haven't been a whole lot of shots though. 19 to 17 is the advantage as Meg Gilbride trying to hustle onto this. San Islo though plays the body. Power play. And it's gonna be interference the call. Yes, sir. San Islo is not happy. 10, 10 years ago, that's okay. Yep. But current day, you can't you can't interfere with Meg Gilbride trying to get to the puck. Yep. And that's what she did. She interfered. She 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 tried laying the body on. Yep. I mean, Meg Gilbride kind of played it off a little bit, fell to her knees, giving it a little bit of an act. But ultimately, the Ravens are back on power play, and, and twice already they've <laughs> struck on the power play, looking for a third here Ravens, in the third period. Ravens are two for five with the advantage as Haley Donahue whirls a backhand pass. She turned it over though to the senior Katie Stuvey, who then sends it all the way back down. Donahue will pick it up in behind her own net. Flushed out there by Stuvey. The backhand went up to Prentice, who goes across for Delaney Guimont. Guimont, Prentice, Donahue, Massaro, Parker, the personnel out there. Three defenders, two forwards. As Parker, one of those forwards, sends it all the way in. Ravens having a hard time getting themselves set up here on the power play as the Pioneers get another clear. Fresh sheet of ice, though, to work with as Donahue again turns the puck over in neutral place. Gets it back, though, and now we'll try and reset. Passes on for Doucette, but she couldn't corral it. And the puck is sent back into Ravens territory. Donahue will pick it up. 106 left to go in the interference call to San Islo. And Bridget Prentice in behind her own cage. Makes a nice spin move there. And will now break out of her own end. Donahue, tape to tape she goes to Nicole Amato, who's got a goal tonight. Amato in over the line. Tried to drop it off for Doucette, but it was played Nicely there by Lewis, who moves it up the boards. And once again, it's cleared out. This is the best penalty kill that the Pioneers have had so far tonight. Franklin Pierce has yet to get themselves set up. And you always hate getting that man advantage. And that man advantage turns into a conditioning skate. Yeah. You're going back and forth back and, and back forth. and forth. But it's been a lot of that so far as the Ravens just try and gain the zone. They do drop pass there for Doucette. Tried to hook one back to Drown. It's under her stick. And by the... Reaction to Coach Stockdale, that just about sums up this power play try for the Ravens. As Drown has Gilbride, a three-on-one potentially, as Gilbride now cuts back the other way. Harassed along there by Bishop. Ten seconds left to go in the interference call. Gilbride back up to the point. Shot, never got through. Doucette, though, picks it up. Now has it in behind the net. Power play wrapping up here. Ravens, ironically, just getting set up as Gilbride slid that through the blue paint. And out. So the Pioneers get a big kill early here. And will now reset in their own end as, look out, Grimmer lost the handle of it at the side of her own net. Fortunately, though, for her, was able to recover as the Pioneers will break it out. They gain the red line. Attempted dumping goes off of Parker as Newberger sets the edges. Protects well. Ravens just looking to get it out. Massaro That's is going to go. A bad call. That's got a stick a tangled up. I believe checking is going to be the call, call coming up. That... That, that's a harmless body contact right there. It, she, she lost her edge. I mean, that, that one. And again, I realize we're, we're, we're a little biased towards the Ravens. You know, we're on Ravens Sports Network, but that, that's a bad call there. It's, it's, you've been letting it go in that, yeah, that they, sense of the body let, contact. They've let the body contact to an extent. You can't pass. start now. Look out here, rolling puck. Ravens is trying to get it out of the zone, but Bishop holds it. Now moves it back to the point to Goody. Finds Bishop. Shot right into the gut of Ostrander, who will hold on. So body checking the call on Marissa Massaro. So the Pioneers get a kill early on. And now we'll jump on the power play in which they are 0 of 2 tonight. But a great way to get themselves back into this game. As Payne trying to win the draw. Puck comes back to Bishop. Bishop curling, top of the circle, shot, redirected, saved by Ostrander, and then she makes a right pad save there as Grimmer pushed a follow-up chance in on her. Payne cycles down low, Grimmer at the hash marks, now cutting, top of the circle, shot, and Ostrander sees that all the way in and traps it up along the emblem of her jersey, another good positional save for the freshman. So so they've done this twice now. I, I think this is how they're going to try and beat the Franklin Paris Pony Colors. They're going to take the same player and they're going to curl around the circles, yep. and not not move the puck like they've been in the past. Sort two. of a high to low cycle, you could say. As by yourself, though. Klein wins a draw back. Lewis, watched by DeCicio, hands it over to Bryant. Back to Lewis, takes the shot. Leave that hit off a of body and wide. DeCicio got to it. Prentice picks up the loose puck, goes off the glass, and gets it out to the red line. Pioneers looking for a quick re-entry as Sanis Lowe gains the line. Puck picked up now by... 
Lewis try to drop it over to her teammate, but Stanislaw below the goal line, couldn't get to it. Now it's pushed back to her. Works back down low to Lewis. Watched there by Donahue. Back up top for Sanislo. 54 seconds left to go on Massaro's penalty. Across they go. Klein fan on the one-timer. Lewis picks it back up. Bottom of the left circle. Now plays it across, but it's under Stuvey's stick. Ravens trying to get to it. Prentice just does enough to get it out. And it goes under Bryant's stick. And Urban has to vacate her crease to make a play on this puck. 35 seconds left on Massaro's penalty. As Bryant gains the line, good stick check though by Amato. Nice re-entry though from Lexi Edwards, but Amato picks it up and sends it back out to neutral ice. Good work here on this penalty kill so far as Edwards and Newberger going in after it. Edwards out in front, chance, and it's just pushed wide by Shoebottom, trying to jam away at it, but Ostrander held the short side, no, right back out in front it comes, and Shoebottom got tangled up. No call on the play, the Sacred Heart parents are irate as the Ravens We'll kill this penalty off. And I'll tell you what, as a, as a former player, there's nothing more that I love to see than irate parents. I'll tell you that, Tyler. But but a, a good play in front by the Ravens defender. Shoebottom gets tripped up, and the Ravens are going to go right back on the kill. Emont then gave her, or rather that was Lily Cleary who got a bit of an extra whack. But the Ravens playing with a little bit of fire here. As Delaney Guimont will sit for her second infraction of the night. And Ezra, you don't want to let this game get away from you because of undisciplined hockey. And I, I like what Coach Stockdale is doing. He's not screaming. Yeah, they just took another hunt. He's, he's clapping. He's saying, all right, let's go. Another PK. We're just going off. Let's get another one here. Let's get another one here. Let's kill another one off. He's, he's being supportive. He's not being, I hate to say, the scumbag coach on the bench. But he's being, uh, he's being nice. Well, we kind of talked about it, you know, sometimes the referees can make calls based on if a particular coach or player has gotten under their skin. So for Coach Stockdale, playing it cool is important. As the Pioneers will look to cut into this lead, but Haley Parker picks up the errant pass and sends it the length of the river. And the Pioneers, not necessarily the strongest team with the power play. But they're going to work here, trying to get themselves back into the game. They're... 0 of 3 tonight, and they're trailing by 2 currently as Goody gains the line along the near side. Now we'll hook it back, going D to D there. Shot though was blocked, Parker getting onto it, unable to get the clear, it comes back to Solik. Plays it into the corner, Prentice trying to tie up Bishop. Bishop now working it, trying to get it back to the point, it comes to Goody. Goody stick handles, banks a pass back down low to Bishop. Bishop trying to look to the slot, it goes off of Parker's skates. And all the way out. And a, a great great play there by Parker. She didn't get in the face of the, the Sacred Heart player right in the slot. She stood behind her and just interrupted the play right when the puck got there. Klein with a shot. Goes Locked. off of Donahue there and wide. 38 seconds left on Guimont's tripping call. Donahue trying to hustle to get there first. Poked it past Lewis, who then gets it back after a good keep there. Now look out. Solik with a chance. Blocked down again in front. Amato was there. Less than 25 seconds to go. Ravens trying to get consecutive kills as Lewis, top of the circle, shooting, and a left pad save by Ostrander. Gilbride picks up the rebound, can't get a clear. Good keep by Solik, who sends it in deep. 12 seconds left here. Now 10 on Guimont's call. 12.50 left to go in the third period. Puck comes over Klein's stick. Klein protecting against Newberger. Now a bad angle try from Stuvey off a of body and wide. Teams are back to five on five. Solik with a drive. Sticked away to the glass by Ostrander. Another kill here. Solik, though, as the Pioneers continue to possess. Solik makes a nice move. Now tries to cut back out front. Fires a shot. Flex down by Ostrander. Rebound was pushed back onto her. She got the paddle down. And the Ravens survive as Delaney Guimont gets to neutral ice. Looking for more here is Amato, who picks it up in below the goal line. Amato just trying to buy some time as fresh legs come on. Ali Sugar forces a turnover. Carolyn Drown will play it back to Sugar. Sugar redirected on there. Urban makes a good save. I believe that hit Parker as well as Bryant, who was in front jousting. And the Pioneers will break out unscathed. Massaro in neutral ice, won a puck battle, but Edwards takes it right back. Massaro, though, with the stick, pokes it back out to center. Now gloves it down and will slap it in deep. 11.45 left in what's been a fast-moving third period so far. Ravens ahead. By two, trying to add to their cushion as Sugar has it, got checked, drown across, Prentice for the shot, looking for the, there was Massaro, it's a high stick, 
Urban then swats the loose puck into the corner. Parker, down low she goes to Massaro. Ravens trying to get set up. Massaro banks it to Drown. Over now, Prentice. Prentice shooting off a of body. Kicks over to Parker. Parker had it knocked off her stick by Cleary, who now breaks up with it left side. Cleary, watch there. Sends a shot wide of Ostrander. Drown, pitch forks it back to Prentice, who's under quick pressure from shoe bottom. Prentice gets it up to Sugar. Had it knocked off her stick by Payne. Drown, though, in the right spot, picks up the puck and banks it in behind the net for Bridget Prentice, excuse me. A lot of talking as this puck is held in by Grimmer, who scored the game's first goal. Bishop trying to twist it in deep. Sugar having some trouble with it. Puck loose in the skates. Bit sloppy here. Now it comes out, and Holmes will try and put some pressure. And th this third period has been just offense, offense, offense. I mean, both these teams are just so tightly contested, and then they, they're both so so good offensively, but so good defensively where you just don't, don't know what you're going to get. And this third period is, is strictly the, the, the first, the offense. Guimont had stepped up in neutral ice and a pioneer hit the ice hard. It was Maddie Bishop, and you could hear the crack of the plastic helmet hitting off the ice. She definitely was shaken up. Fortunately, though, up now on her own two skates. Certainly she'll be looked at. Just inadvertent contact, and as she got spun down to the ice, whacked the helmet right off, or right on the ice, rather. Bishop's had a fantastic game, picked she up the really primary. Has. Picked up the primary assist, and we've certainly said her name a lot. She I had mean, that breakaway chance that the, was stopped. The set of wheels that she has, she can just get going and get going quick. 3-1 still our score. As Amato has it in below the goal line. Nice pass there. Gilbride from a tight angle, and Urban has the short side ste sealed off, rather. And I, I like that shot. Awful angle, but I like that shot because you just never know. Put, put it on net. No such thing. Michael Scott once said, "No, <laughs> you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I that think is I've a, heard someone else say I that, I think though. I've heard someone else say it, too. He was a pretty good hockey player, too, if I recall. Just just okay. Just you know? okay. Just okay. As look out here, it could be something coming up for the Pioneers as they cut in. It's Lewis with a shot, and she scores. Jane Lewis, who's been dormant. Breaks through with 9.50 left, and it's a one-goal hockey game here. And Jane Lewis, you got to always keep your eye out on her. That's her 19th goal of the season, 104th career point. And she just did it all herself there, cutting right in from about the top of the right circle. And she beat a standing Ostrander past the blocker. So the Pioneers have life. It's 3-2, to two and it's back to a one-goal game. A very common trait between these two teams when they tend to meet up. Allie Sugar right back, fires a shot. Urban off her stick. She didn't have that covered up all the way. And now Parker jousting with Goody as things get tenser and tenser. So one goal game here. We're past the halfway point of regulation. 9.40 left to go in the game. And if there's a goal scored this period... It has to be for Franklin Pierce. No, no it, it, you cannot just say, all right, if they get the next one, we'll get the one after. It has Ooh, to be Newberger yours. with a head-hunting shot that goes right over the top of Urban's mask. As Massaro mucks in the corner, Parker coming in to help her out. Good puck battle won, though, by Lexi Edwards, who will now wheel it out of her own end. Massaro, though, whacking at her. Sugar unable to hold the line. The Pioneers will try and break back in. Cleary. Leaves it there for shoe bottom. Good cancellation as then Cleary sent one that was wide of Ostrander. Nine minutes just about left to go as Edwards twirls a backhander off of a body and through the crease. Pioneers, you can tell they're feeling it right now as a wraparound try. Ostrander shut it down. Grimmer once again backhands one off the side of the net. Comes back out in front. Drive there was blocked down. And Massaro gets the clear as Parker dropped to get to it. They're smelling blood as the Pioneers are looking for a quick up. They've got it. Grimmer gains the line. She's onside. Has a trailer in Solik. Trying to cut middle. Solik with a shot. Blocked down by Sugar. Prentice. Or Prentice, rather. Thank you. Proto couldn't get in and over the red line. Pioneers right back in again. Payne has Grimmer going into the net. Payne, stick save by Ostrander. And then the net gets taken off as Grimmer and Prentice both colliding. And if you're Franklin Pierce, you've got to find a way 
to retilt the ice, so to speak, because the Pioneers are feeling it now, trailing by just a goal here with 8.21 left to go in the third. And right there for Payne, that was the the, the best shot. Shoot for like, the rebound. Um, shoot for the rebound, put it right off the far pad of the Ostrander. Unfortunately, your, your, your second part in the two-on-one knocked the net off. It's boring, but wow, what a great shot coming off the stick of Payne. Donahue under pressure, turned it over to Lewis. Lewis trying to send it to the front. Canceled out there by Bridget Prentice. Now she Steph Proto chase. just will chase. look to get that puck in deep, and now she will chase. Fresh bodies hopping over the boards for the Ravens as Proto going in there against her number sake, Olivia Bryant. Anna Klein, the co-rookie of the year. Try to break that pass out. Newberger, good awareness in center ice, trying to step up. But Lewis wins that battle and sends it in deep. Stuvey. First on it for the Pioneers. She gets tripped up. No call coming. And Nicole Amato now will wheel it out. Could have potentially been something there, but it looked like Stuby just stepped on the stick of Guimont as Amato's shot goes wide. Blocker side. Gilbride off the bench. Joins her line mates. As Gilbride now trying to get in on the pressure. In behind the net. Trying to work this puck free, but unable to do so is Spearing. Puck chopped up into the air, settled down there for a moment by Cleary. She then turns it over, and Kiki Doucette snaps it right back in deep. 7-10 left to go in the third period. And Sorrow getting in there onto Spearing, who then finds a teammate. Great move there, as the Pioneers now will rush it out. They're feeling good about themselves, as right through the blue paint, this puck was sent. Nicole Goody, the defender, going end-to-end. -end. Now it's worked back to Cleary from a tight angle. Shot never got through. Shoe bottom trying to push it around the other side. Sugar picks it up. Looking to get the clear. Goody knocks it down off her skate. Sugar then rushes to the point to meet her. Donahue pressured along there by Shoe Bottom. Gets some help from Sugar. Sugar just trying to get that puck out but can't. Finally comes to Prentice, who will just do it all herself and at least get it out to neutral ice. Puck is poked forward. Could be a two on one potential, three on one here. In front, chance! And it's just pushed wide of the net. Right there out in front, a golden opportunity for the Pioneers. They could not get it to go. The Ravens dodge a bullet. They're not out of the woods just yet. Lewis out in front, and it's just under Klein's stick. And Haley, Haley Donahue on that 12 one she did something perfect. She got super close to that one, and she laid down. Took away any opportunity for a clean pass, and it was a bad pass, and it resulted in a, in a bad opportunity for the Sacred Heart Pioneers. We have played... A lot of hockey here tonight. 5.50 and counting left to go in this period. 14 minutes just about as the Pioneers hold the line. Solik attacked there by Guimont. Ravens just trying to survive here. Katie Newberger up the board. She goes to DeCicio. Good play there from Kramer to get it out. And now DeCicio steps in. Now might have a lane to the net. DeCicio on her backhand. Urban makes the save. And DeCicio going hard to the net. Got pushed in there. Some extracurricular as Urban got knocked back. Play. But no harm, no foul as it's just a net drive there. 527 left here in the third period. And Ezra, I feel as if every time I announce what the time is, it feels like things are going slower and slower since Jane Lewis made it a one goal game. And that's just how <laughs> how it works. And, and I said it I said it earlier. We were watching the uh the, the first game in this women's semifinal. And it just with, with the time thing down it, the farther we got into the game, the slower the time went. And don't worry if you're Coach Stockdell, that those seconds feel like hours. Haley Payne, stick handles, sends a long shot in. Ostrander thought about playing it, but Maddie Bishop pressures her into taking a defensive zone faceoff. As the tension oh boy. grows thicker and thicker as the faceoff comes to Ostrander's right. 5.07 left in the third period. Edwards in on the draw against her number sake, Amato, who wins it. Drown overskated that puck. Nearly created a, a disaster. Drown then moves it out. Amato got checked by Edwards, no call. And then chopping at that was Shoebottom, but she put it wide. Gilbride tries to hustle onto it. Can't. Gets tangled up there with a Pioneer along the far side. And Prentice, once again, aggressively able to skate it out. Pioneer's trying to come right back in. Shoebottom onside. Shoebottom with a shot through the legs of Drown. Ostrander makes a stick save. Now it's sent back towards the front. Ostrander was there, though, along the short side as the puck is moved ahead to Haley Parker. Parker to Gilbride, who chips it into Pioneer's territory. Great read there by Drown, who then knocks it down and gains the line. 
Brown will then peel off for a change. Parker aggressively pressuring Nicole Goody, trying to force a turnover. Now Massaro is in there. Hack and whack time as it's played around for Shoebottom. Donahue pinching aggressively as we tick towards four minutes to go in the third. Puck held in there. Guimont didn't have an opportunity to pick her head up and perhaps take a shot, so she just plays it into the corner. Ravens along the near side, trying to just hold the line and kill some time. Guimont does. massaro has got some room. She creeps in. She fires off the oh crossbar. Oh, my God. Massaro walked into one, and she beat Urban clean to the glove side. Could not beat the crossbar. Remember that sequence should things turn for Franklin Pierce. 3.37 here left to go. Guimont spins it over to Donahue, who goes right up the wall and still not out. Great keep there at the line by Spearing. Well, remember that sequence. Remember... First period would have been the second goal of the game. Yeah. Emmy Parker. And that, uh, we were thinking of two different things. Absolutely right. Drive. And Ostrander makes a left pad save. The rebound was cleared into Sugar, who then banks it out to neutralize. 310 left to go. Third period. Ravens just trying to survive what it's been a flurry by the Pioneers as Spearing holds the line. Backhands one off the skates of Holmes. Kramer just whips it around. Tired bodies out there. Haley Donahue. Can barely skate as right out in front. A backhand try by Stewie never got through. She gets it back to Sissio trying to win a battle. Here's Lewis with a shot blocked down off of Donahue. Stewie to the front Ooh. off of Holmes and wide. Lewis picks it up. All pioneers here. Lewis across and it's off a skate again and wide. This time to the blocker side of Ostrander. Lewis again tied up by Donahue. No support coming. Less than two and a half minutes left to go. Pioneers hold the line. Spearing plays it in deep once again. Donahue is out of gas. She gets to this loose puck, trying to chip it forward. Decisio, good stick lift there from Grimmer. Puck bouncing all around. Held in now by Payne, fresh off the bench. Gets around Donahue, who's virtually a pylon at this point. She can barely move. She's been out there for what seems to be forever. Through the slot it comes. Solik couldn't get her stick on. Two minutes to go. We'll keep our eye on Sarah Urban. It is still fairly early. Donahue is out of gas as Guimont wow. with a check. Crowd wants a call. That, that was a check. That was that a check, was a check right there. That was a check Considering the check they called before on Guimont, the parents are irate. 140 left to go here. Puck tied up. The Ravens have not gotten it out as the Pioneers still have it. Pain of the shot saved by Ostrander. Holmes can't get it out. Ostrander pounces wow. on it. She's got it covered, and Emmy Ostrander's <laughs> fired up as Haley Payne she's came box. whacking in. She's going to the box. She's going to the box out. She's she's questioning that one. I'm so, sorry. There's there's no question in that one. She Lady Gimon is wow. not happy, and with a minute and a half left to go, the Pioneers are going onto the power play, down a goal. <laughs> we'll see what Coach O'Malley opts to do with. Sarah Urban, Delaney Guimont back to the box. I mean, that one, that she came pioneers, out of nowhere. The Pioneers used their timeout. What will Coach Stockdale opt to do? Pioneers were taking their sweet time changing lines up. Coach Stockdale will not use his timeout. Sarah Urban will stay in the crease. It's a five on four advantage. Franklin Pierce has allowed just eight goals all season. When shorthanded against conference opponents as Katie Newberger can't get it out. Goody holds the line. Urban still in the crease. Prentice tied up with Stuvi. Body checking the call on Delaney Guimont. 112 left to go in the game. Prentice just eating up the clock. Two pioneers in there trying to work it free. Bridget Prentice not giving an inch. Up the wall it goes. Massaro trying to get on it. She lunges for it. Can't. Final minute here. Moved across. Back door, Stuvie fan on the one-timer. Urban is out of the cage. It's now a six on four. 52 seconds. Up the wall it comes. Ravens just trying to survive. Pass across the shot. Off a of body. Loose in front. And cleared by Bridget Prentice. Rolling puck. Doesn't have enough juice. And it was wide regardless. 37 and counting as the Pioneers will rev it up. Six on four. My heart as Massaro makes his stick check. Bishop in over the line, hounded there. Sends one to the front, Ostrander stabs it away. 23 seconds, out in the slot, Stuvi down low chance, Ostrander shuts the door on Bishop and will freeze with 17.2 
left to go. Breathe, everybody. Someone You've got call, a moment. Someone call the ambulance because Tyler's going to need the defibrillator after these next 17 seconds. Franklin Pierce will now use their timeout, wisely so, and it gives me a moment, man, to recuperate myself. Well, I'll take Good the moment Lord. to talk. <laughs> By all means. Because you, 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 By you all might means. need it. But, uh, I mean, wow. Wow. I mean, Emmy Ostrander. There was a second there. She was all the way on the right side of her crease, and I thought for sure Sacred Heart was going to put one home on the left side. But somehow, I don't know if she waved her magic wand or something, <laughs> but she got back to that far side far side of the crease and made the save so you know partner i brought two water bottles with me today because the last game i did in this building was an 82 minute double overtime marathon and i brought no water with me <laughs> i wasn't taking any chances here well let's hope let's hope frank right. pierce will stand tall because i don't have any water <laughs> oh, with me this goodness. time so goodness me we shall see my friend as we're off the timeout now these two teams currently at a one goal score We've seen this movie before, Ezra, no doubt about it. There was a time where nine straight games between these two teams were decided by a single goal or fewer. 13 seconds left. We're out of the timeout. Newberger makes a stick play. Less than 10 seconds to go. Ravens get a clear. Seven seconds left. The Pioneers trying to hustle after it. Five seconds left to go. You've got two and one. Folks, we'll be back. Tomorrow at 4 o'clock, the Ravens are going to the NEWHA championship match. They've got a date with St. Anselm tomorrow at 4 o'clock right here in this building. But it was not easy. This team somehow found a way to hang on after Jane Lewis made it a one-goal score. And the defending champs are defending no more. The Ravens squeak by with a one-goal victory here over the Pioneers, a textbook Sacred Heart Franklin Pierce game here tonight, Ezra.